In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Question. What do you see when you look in the mirror? Tell you what I see. I see a beast. I see someone who should not be messed with. When I look in the mirror, well, here's what I see. Feel free to call me Father Beast because I'm sure that you all see me the same as I see me. Or maybe not. You know this whole thing of of identity and self-image, it can be confusing. I mean, apparently... I don't think you see me the way I see me. And am I really seeing the right thing? Am I really a muscle-bound person with the beast tattooed on my biceps? Or am I just a guy who probably should work out more? Which is it? Who am I anyway? Well, this question, who am I, is one of the most important questions anyone can ask. And there are a lot of ways that we can seek insight into that question. Um, So there are personality tests that you can take, like the Myers-Briggs personality inventory. I did that. It told me, for those who may understand it, it's that I am an INTJ which means I'm introverted, logical, future-focused, analytical, and boring. Okay, I added the boring part, uh, but I'm pretty sure that all of us INTJs are not usually the life of the party. Regardless, uh, Myers-Briggs gives some insight into who we are. A person can also just look inside themselves, look deep inside and find one's deepest desires and feelings. Or we can listen to what other people tell us. You're wonderful. You're stupid. You're the best. You're a loser. All of these and and other things as well contribute to our self-understanding. But if we really want to know who we are, the place to go is here. The place to go is the greatest story ever told, which, of course, is the Bible. And you'll recall that the Bible is is one long story from, from beginning to end. And so what we've been doing for a couple of weeks is we've been considering what this story in the Bible, what it tells us about the world that we live in. So we've asked, how can such a beautiful world with sunsets and and waterfalls and mountains, how can such a beautiful world also be so dangerous with hurricanes and tornadoes and mudslides? Well, that's all found. The answer to those questions is found in the story. So, too, is the answer to the question, who am I? And that's what we want to consider this morning. Who am I, anyway? All right? Well, let's take a look. Now, before we go on, we all need to understand something. And it's it's very basic. It should be obvious, but it must be said. We are created beings. Now, this reality is absolutely foundational if we are to understand who we are. 
Because we are created beings, beings created by God, then we are who God says we are. God and God alone gives us our identity. Okay? Now, having said that, I wonder if you noticed something about our reading from Genesis. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Did you pick up on those words, us and and our? I mean, what is that about? Who's God talking to anyway? I mean, Genesis 1.1 is, is clear, it would seem. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. From Genesis 1.1, it would seem that the creation was a one-man job, eh, so to speak. But let's read on. If we read on, we discover this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Ah! Now, in these verses, we, we, we have two individuals, distinct individuals. We have God, and we have the Spirit of God. Two distinct individuals that are... That are Uh, participating in the the creation. But wait, there's more. You remember this? From the Gospel according to John. In the beginning. Does that sound familiar? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that were made, was made. And if we were to read on, we would discover that the Word there is none other than Jesus Christ. Now we don't have time or the need to do a deep dive into the the mystery of the Trinity, but here's the point. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, they were all involved in the creation. And here's why that matters, and it matters a lot. When God decided to create human beings, he could have done it in a million, zillion different ways. But again, remember what God said? God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Which means that you and I, we have all been intentionally created in a special, unique way. We were made in the image of God. That is, we were formed in such a way that we somehow reflect something of the character of God himself. Well, one of the most important ways that we reflect the character nature of God is is community. Now, you might not have ever thought about it this way, but God is a community of three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bound together by love. And that's a big part of what it means to be made in the image of God. In a nutshell, you, I, we were all made for community. And, of course, (laughs) you already know that on some level, I think. You remember back in those early dark days of of COVID? You remember um, how lonely you were, how isolated you were, how you longed for contact with other human beings. We were isolated. We were shut in. And people were just going crazy. In our neighborhood people couldn't stand it anymore, and so they got out on the streets, and, 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 and they walked. And yeah, they maintained social distancing and all that, but what happened was people actually talked to their neighbors, people they didn't know. 
Maybe they lived around the corner or down the street. But they got out of their houses and they got to know every uh, different people. Why? Because we were all desperate. We were starving for human contact. That's how we were made. We were made for community. Which has huge implications for us as followers of Jesus. Because we are made for community, we need to be together. We need to be together on Sundays, and we need to be together, if possible, other times during the week. That's what community is. Community is living life together, not as individuals. And even introverts, even I promise you, even introverts need a regular dose of people, people to engage with, people who care. So, all you shy people out there, listen up. I understand. I do. But you just got to meet people. You just have to, to, to find other followers of Jesus and get to know them. I promise it will bless you. It will nurture you. It will feed your soul. Community. It's a big part of what it means to be made in the image of God. But wait, there's more. Every human being on planet Earth has been created in the image of God. And as followers of Jesus, it is part of our task, part of our job, to reflect God's goodness and love to everyone we encounter, whether they are followers of Jesus or not, whether we even like them or not. Rich, poor, friend, foe, Republican, Democrat, Texan fan, cowboy fan, locals, immigrants, smart people, not smart people, tall people, short people, good drivers, bad drivers, there's no distinction. We're all created in the image of God. No one is better than anyone else. And that has to be reflected in the way we treat one another. Jesus put it this way. He said, so whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. It's called the golden rule. You know this. And it's what it means to live into being made in the image of God. But wait, there's more. Early on, I ask you, what do you see when you look in the mirror? And jokingly, I said, I see this. Which, of course, means that our self-image can be wrong. We can misunderstand who we really are. But if you are a follower of Jesus, here is your true identity. To all who did receive Jesus, who believed in the name of Jesus, Jesus gave the right to become children of God. As a follower of Jesus, when you look in the mirror, the person, person looking back at you is a child of God. Now look, you may feel like this when you look in the mirror, all downcast and, and, and woebegone. And maybe all your life people have told you that you're no good, that you're a loser. Maybe your parents abandoned you. Maybe your parents abused you. Maybe you don't have any true friends. Maybe you don't like the way you look. Maybe you're not as young as you used to be. Maybe, 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 maybe. Whatever. Well, guess what? Those things do not define you. As a creature of God, only God has the right to define 
you. You are what God says you are. And God says you're a human being created in his own image. And as a follower of Jesus, you are a blood-bought child of God. We remember that every Sunday. I hope it goes deep. God so loved you that he gave his only son that you should not perish but have eternal life. God paid the ultimate price so that you can be with him forever. Your value was established right here. And there is nothing that can change that. So tomorrow morning, when you look in the mirror and you're shaving or putting on your makeup, brushing your teeth, remember who you're looking at. You're looking at a person created in the image of God. And you are looking at a child of God bought with the blood of Christ. That's who you are. And that is more important than anything else. So as you look in the mirror, as you get ready to go out into the world, you can stand tall. You can hold your head high. And oh yes, please, after you brush your teeth, be sure to floss. It's really important. Amen. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, if you're able, please stand <laughs> and let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. May